guys welcome back to my channel my name is Tash yesterday my partner and I it was our nine year anniversary we just spent the day going shopping and then we just went to the park and decided to read books there with my dog it was just a really nice day before I went to the park I asked my partner I said do you want to choose the book I start today because I'm actually gonna start a reading vlog he can choose the book and whatever one he chooses I will decide what vlog I'm going to do and he decided to choose open water because he said it was a short easy read and I said <laughs> you don't even know you've got no idea so this is actually i think a very sad and emotional book and i was like yeah super easy <laughs> the only reason he thought it was easy is because of how thin the book was but i don't think he realizes the emotional damage that this is gonna do to me i've actually started it i don't even have a bookmark in it because i forgot to take a bookmark with me but i'm at chapter three so I'm literally nine pages in. I'm really liking the writing style so far. So that is positive. In T, choosing this book, you will already know probably from the title of the video, but we're going to be doing a week of reading sad books. This is number one. I do have two more books, but I feel like one of them may take me up the rest of the week. We're going to start with this one. I know this week's going to be very taxing on my emotions, but I'm kind of... I, I feel like I'm ready for it. It's been some good weather outside, it's sunny. What better time than when the sun's out to read some really depressing books? <laughs> what is wrong with me? I actually have problems. Like I'm like, yeah, sun's out, let's read some depressing books. <laughs> like I could have told him, oh no, I'm not reading that one, it's a sad book. I was like, mm, good choice. Oh, let me show you what I bought yesterday actually. I went to the one and only M&S because M&S I feel like once you hit the age of 25 it's like mm, M&S is kind of like it's kind of hitting everything I find in there honestly I'm like that is beautiful that is an artwork and it's literally just a plain t-shirt I just bought a plain white tee literally £9.50 I bought the cutest bag I thought it was just such a summer bag never owned a brown bag in my life I tried it on with a few outfits yesterday so cute anyway that's my haul goodbye <laughs> my loves i'm checking in it is tuesday at the moment i've just done some filming and all my household chores but last night by the way these are freshly clean shoes i don't have shoes on the bed <laughs> just realized i've not updated you from what i read yesterday i didn't get too far yesterday which i'm quite sad about because i have been enjoying it so much i'm at page 31 chapter 7 i mean it is only a short book i'm probably about a quarter of the way through maybe just under a quarter of the way i'm really enjoying this i feel like the writing sometimes <laughs> It takes me a little while to like process which character is who because it is describing it as if I'm the main character. It says like you speak to your brother-in-law and then your brother says this to you. Sometimes I'm thinking am I the female main character? Oh wait no I'm the male main character. I'm getting confused at which person's who but that's just a me thing. Besides that otherwise it's been just beautiful. Like some of the quotes in here have been so beautiful. So far we don't actually know the characters names which I find so fascinating. I'm wondering do we ever find out what they're names are going to be. He meets this woman on a night out in South London, I believe. Yes, Southeast London. On that night out, the friend Samuel introduces them and says, you guys will get along. Like she is a dancer. You're a photographer. You know, they go their separate ways. He doesn't see her for the rest of the night. He's really sad, but he starts telling like all his friends about this amazing woman that he met. Then he gets reintroduced through the friend Samuel again, who says like, oh, my girlfriend's looking for a photographer. Can you help her out? So they go out for drinks together and they're slowly now becoming like friends, realizing that they've got very similar backgrounds of, you know, going to a private school, being the one of few black people within their private school and like how it impacted them. Now we're slowly getting a bit of a background into his family life, what that meant for him and his family. Sorry, let me just double check. Um, so his family's from Ghana they moved here his parents i believe and then he was born in england so yeah so far it's not a lot has happened but the journey has been so lovely to hear and listen to and read about so i'm just enjoying what's happening like i'm not actually there's no actual driving plot at this stage we're just focusing on the characters and who they are and their hardships i mean that's sort of what literary fiction is it's It is my dog's birthday today, guys. Hey, baby. It's turning eight. 
He's just begging to go for a, a W-A-L-K. It's raining, so I've got to wait till the afternoon. He's had a really good day. We've given him so many extra treats. I hope he's having a good day. So I did last night get to page 60. So I've got 100 pages left. Well, page 62, should I say, chapter 13. I'm going to try to finish this now, and then I'm going to do some editing, and then I'm going to start my second book for tonight. Let's see if it gets any more emotional. I'm feeling connected to the characters but I'm not going to say that I feel emotionally connected to the characters just yet. I know I'm only 60 pages in but I still feel like I should be feeling a little bit more connected to them but the writing is beautiful in itself and that's why I think I'm just enjoying the journey that I'm on but I wish I was feeling that connection to them. Sorry I got distracted. We'll just see how it goes because I've still got 100 pages left. What's really happened with the plot is their friendship is evolving. Um, she keeps going away to Dublin for, I don't know if it was school, I'm pretty sure it was school or work. She keeps coming back, they reconnect, they have these moments together but they're very brief and she's also setting up her boundaries to protect herself and he is respecting those boundaries but he's also understanding that there is something bigger here and she's just a little bit afraid. That's basically like a little summary of like what's happened. I like how respectful they're being towards each other. Like they're very good open communicators and that's just really refreshing to read. I'm gonna read a little bit now and then like where the day takes me. I've got up to page 106. The romance is starting to build a bit more. I'm feeling the connection. Like I mentioned earlier, it's more prominent now. However, things are going a little too smoothly and there is maybe like this much left of the book. Maybe like a quarter of what I've already read left. I'm a bit nervous because I don't want anything to happen to them. I feel like they've found a safe space within each other and a place where they are trusting each other with their vulnerability and I don't want that to be disrupted. Stop recording because I feel like things are about to go wrong. This like little part of the story, I'm just gonna read it out, but it it really like <laughs> it really hit me. Sometimes you forget there's nothing in your pockets. Sometimes you forget that to be you is to be unseen and unheard, or it is to be seen and heard in ways you did not ask for. Sometimes you forget to be you is to be in a black body and not much else. <sighs> this book, man, he's so sad. Not sure how I feel after reading the acknowledgements. I'm a bit sad. This is gonna be one of those books that I need to sit and like think about for a moment because I've just been fed so much information that I'm I haven't had time to fully process the entire story and what it means. Yes, the romance was beautiful and I think it was very like nurturing in a way. His struggles living in the UK as a black man and him trying to find his safety in every place that he goes was very eye-opening to me and the writing was definitely very poetic and lyrical sometimes to make its point and be more powerful it would be repetitive within like a, maybe a few sentences it would say the same thing a few times. I think that really made the point hit home a bit more with that because it just seemed more powerful to prone in on those specific words and the choice for those words and I really enjoyed like reading that style of writing and it didn't feel like obviously the words were repetitive it just made 
the statement more powerful to me. It was a really beautiful book and I really do recommend this already. I don't know what I'm going to rate this. I'm probably going to have to think on it for a bit. Heartbreaking but very beautiful. This is probably a very good book for May. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and this book is highly focused on mental health, especially for the male main character in this. So if you are looking for some books with uh, mental health representation, highly recommend this. I just picked out the next book from my shelf, which I'm going to start tonight, but I will be doing some editing before I start it, but I thought I would introduce you to the book before I go ahead. I think it's time and I'm very scared. Let's read A Little Life. Let's see if this is gonna break me the way it's broken everyone else. I think I'm ready. We'll see what happens with this because I feel like this one's gonna destroy me. Hey guys, I haven't updated you probably in maybe two days. It is now Saturday. I've made it halfway. Chapter three in part four, which is the axiom of equality. We've had a lot of trauma dumping at this stage. <laughs> I'm now starting to feel the motions towards this book and it is starting to really like put me in like one of those mind states where you're like, oh, this is a really sad book. You guys went wrong and I know it's only about to get worse. I just, yeah. Okay, so if you guys haven't read this book, which I'm sure a lot of you know all about this, I'll give a little brief synopsis, but basically this follows four friends who are college roommates, roughly, or college friends. And then a few of them stay roommates. They move from different places within New York and grow up over the years. Um, each part of this book, you get a time jump from like, where they met, where they are three or five years later, and it just continually jumps every few years. It will switch POV from the narrator, and then sometimes it will speak from like other characters' perspectives which aren't in the friend group, particularly one person named Harold, and it'll speak from his perspective in first person, but when it's speaking about all four of the boys, the narrator's speaking in third person, so you are like knowing what everyone's thinking, what they're all at. And the main characters are Willem, JB, Malcolm, and Jude. Jude is like the main character, I would say, out of all of these boys and all of the other guys. Their friendship really hangs on through Jude, I would say, for most of the story. We've now just got to a part where Jude has just had a falling out with one of his friends and that's like the first real close friend that he's had like a sort of problem with where he's been hurt by them. Other than that, like he is like the main focus and the center of the story and just like where all the pain is coming from. I can't even describe this book. It's such a odd feeling, like I can't describe it. <laughs> At first I was really struggling to get into it, I'm not gonna lie. Probably the first maybe 50 pages I was like, there is so many words and such small text. Like this is a huge book and it's so much information being thrown at you. I started taking lots of notes down about like who they were and what their hobbies are and how each person's defined separately within the friendship group because I was getting really confused as to like which one was which. As the book has started to progress now, I've noticed that the conversations that are happening, I'm like, oh no, these are very important conversations. This is really all building up towards something. It's making me feel so connected to all of the characters. I can't explain any of the trauma that they're going through because it's just too gruesome to even discuss really. I understand why people say like this book is purely just like time jumping to them with like trauma dumping and I completely understand that because that is what it is. Each chapter I'm like this can't get worse and then it does and then there's a light moment where I'm like oh okay we're coming back around. By the end of the chapter another trauma dump. I'm like how is this all happening? How is this getting worse? Like I, I'm only halfway. 
I have never read anything this dark. And not like dark romance. Like I get dark romance. Like this is not nothing dark romance. This is just dark. Dark themes. I just keep sighing. I keep sighing. I can't stop. I have about nine hours left. Nine hours 42. Oh my god. Ten hours left. Every afternoon at four. After the last of his classes and before the first of his chores, he had a free period of an hour. Good morning. It's Sunday. Just under 500 pages in. It's getting very emotional. <laughs> I almost cried to myself. Stop it, Will. Last night I was feeling a little bit sick. I had started getting a sore throat. My throat just felt like sandpaper. And then this morning now I've woken up with congestion. And now I was like, I'm just going to push through, get up, just try to do my routine. <laughs> Maybe like an hour and a half, two hours later, I started getting full body chills. And I was like, um, mm -mm, I need some medication. So I've just had some Sudafed and it's kicked in like maybe half an hour ago I quickly did my makeup and I'm like I'm gonna push through and get this video done because it needs to be done but I may be a little bit lacking in energy today so that will be why <laughs> every single year without a doubt I will get the spring sickness no matter what it'll be some type of flu or sickness that's going around and I will catch it it's just England I don't get enough vitamin d here to defend off all this sickness I'm just constantly getting sick and I hate it <laughs> but anyway I have about two hours left of audiobook which is one two times speed. I'm at the Dear Comrade section, um, which is probably what I last showed you yesterday that I met there. I did like probably read maybe five pages and it started getting really emotional and then my camera died. So I was like, no, that's just a sign. I'm going to have a break tonight and then I'll film it tomorrow. I'm feeling the emotions. It's going to be a sad one and I just know it. To be honest, what I thought was going to happen was the opposite. I thought there was going to be something else that happened with another character. Yeah, no, that completely took me through a loop at the end of the the last few pages of the Happy Years chapter three. <sighs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I haven't really cried at all. I've had a few tears, but I haven't like, I haven't had a moment yet where I've been bawling my eyes out, hyperventilating like everyone else has. So I feel like this little last portion because I started getting very like choked up. My makeup may be done for no reason. Makeup and it's literally taken off all my makeup. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> oh my 
my god, what was the point? distraught by this book um I don't know if I would recommend this to anyone because it's so sad I'm gonna need to have a moment <laughs> Hey guys, I'm a little sick now, and by a little I mean more sick than when I was last time I spoke to you, but I'm okay. Let's go through a quick roundup of the books that I read last week. I've decided to give this a 4.25 star rating. I loved this book, and it's Maybe One to Go and by Caleb Nelson's new release, which I don't remember the title but it's only just come out maybe within like the last month I believe. This was a story written in second person which was what I was trying to describe in the earlier clips but I just was not able to put the words together. I, looking back while I've been editing I'm like it's second person Tash like it's second person. <laughs> Anyway, this book is second person and this was my first time ever reading a second person perspective book and I thoroughly enjoyed it even though I did struggle within the first couple of chapters because I was trying to read it from like the girl's perspective but I had to keep reminding myself no this is from the male main character's perspective but once I really got deep into the book it, it wasn't an issue for me otherwise it was really beautifully written for me this book was a heartfelt love story it felt tender the topics discussed in here were discussed in a very poetic and lyrical manner it almost felt like a poem oh and this is also his debut which is very crazy to me. I've just read that on the back and I was like, that's insane. But yeah, 4.25. I really, really enjoyed this. A Little Life. I've decided not to rate this book. I know a lot of people have done this and now reading this, I understand why they're not rating it. I don't want people to go into this thinking that this is just like an ordinary book that I'm giving five stars or I'm giving three stars or I'm giving one star. This is a book that is like you go in at your own risk. Excuse me, I just had a little coughing fit. You go in at your own risk. I would say that this is not an easy read in the slightest. The trigger warnings, please read them. I do not say that lightly. Like this is a book that you need to read trigger warnings if you have triggers. I didn't think it was going to hit me. And then the last chapter, it, it sent me off. I was, and because I was feeling so ill yesterday, the crying actually made me feel so much worse and I ended up getting taken out for the rest of the day. Like I was just laying in bed, like I had a no energy left and I was just trying to rehydrate because I had cried that much. I'm sure you guys have obviously seen the vlog footage. There is so much footage of me crying. I have cut it back quite a bit. So you're seeing just the bare minimum. <laughs> of how much I was crying. This is truly a masterpiece in itself with the way it's been put together, but it's just something that I can never recommend. I'm actually at a loss for words. Anyways, I think I'm just gonna round up the video here because this was a very sad week for me and I've actually not picked up a book since finishing this yesterday and I probably will try and read something tonight just because I need to get my head out of this story and move on. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna need more time. I was trying to film a video this week for you guys again, but I'm like, I just can't even pick up a book. Like that is what this book has done to me. So we'll see. And I also think I just need to rest, to be honest. I feel like my body's saying, you need to slow down. <laughs> I'm gonna love you and leave you. I appreciate you if you're still watching this. <laughs> 
really sad book reading vlog. I'm, I'd be surprised if anyone's still here because yeah, that was a lot of crying. So I apologize, next vlog will be a completely different vibe. If you have enjoyed seeing more of these vulnerable sort of content style stuff, please let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to share more of my crying. <laughs> I'm gonna love you and leave you here. I'll see you guys in my next video.